Tune into this week's episode to learn what you need to know about GMOs. And you get to learn it from the highly regarded Robin O'Brien. She's the Erin Brockovich of the food movement. Welcome to today's show. I'm Jen Bolden with Jen BTV, a weekly web show that provides fresh thinking on green living. We do the research for you, test the ideas out in our own life, and then bring you just the best of the best in five minutes or less. Except for today, because Robin has a lot of good things to say. It's now time to tune in and be turned on to the truth about GMOs. GMO stands for genetically modified organism and they're modifying it by taking the DNA of plants and even animals and putting it into our food source, if you can believe. Now, it's been banned in Europe and for good reason. Ooh, Tim Bolden. This tomato smell fishy, get it? This time he's actually not being silly. The DNA from a flounder is injected into GMO tomatoes to help them resist frost. The issue is this, we don't even know the long-term health effects of eating it. Even though we know very little about GMO side effects, about 90% of our food has still been GMO'd. And what we do know is that the initial data is not looking so dandy. In fact, our guest today, Robin O'Brien, has spent many years researching it and her book is phenomenal and it outlines all the data that we have to date. So what's happening is that big agribusiness is using us as their guinea pigs. Nice. Also, when these new proteins are introduced into the food, our body sees them as foreign invaders and attacks. That's why all of these allergies have really popped up as of late. Case in point, in the UK, after GMO soy was introduced, allergies to soy doubled. GMOs are bad for the environment as well. Here's why. A major reason why these seeds are modified is to make them resistant to the herbicides and the pesticides that are sprayed all over them so that they won't die even though they want the weeds and the pests to die. And these resistant plants come from seed that are called Roundup Ready. Basically, it resists the herbicide Roundup made by none other than Monsanto. So now they can double their profits, which are already ginormous from the seed and now the herbicide. Because of all this extra spraying, we've already lost 81% of our monarchs. And without pollinators like butterflies, the world would lose three quarters of all of its crops. Plus, who wants to live in a world without butterflies? So the third reason that you've got to say no to GMOs is it hurts small farmers. You see, Monsanto has engineered their seeds to be sterile. So there's no way for the farmers to use their best plants and take the seeds from them and plant them again. It's a tradition called seed saving, and it's been done for 10,000 years. All of this information on GMOs and Monsanto can be so overwhelming, but luckily we have Robin O'Brien here via Skype, and she is the Erin Brockovich of the food movement. She's gonna really help us break it down. She's an amazing person, and we're so lucky to have her here today. Let's get to it. Okay. So Robin, Monsanto is a dirty word in some people's book. Could you help us understand what's going on there? Monsanto is a chemical company. It's been in existence for over 100 years. Their primary purpose was to sell chemicals. And that was fine. You know, they sold chemicals um, like DDT. They helped um, with the ingredients in Agent Orange. And for most people, especially for parents and grandparents, the association with that name is with a chemical company. But it was in the 1990s when they decided to get into food. And as someone who covered the food industry as an equity analyst, never once did we meet with Monsanto. We met with the food companies. Um, what Monsanto was inventing at the time was this genetically engineered ingredient, these genetically engineered products that literally were made to withstand their chemicals. So as a company that is in the business of selling chemicals, it was a brilliant business model because they were literally hardwiring food crops so that they could withstand increasing doses of chemicals. And in the first 13 years of the introduction of these products by Monsanto, there was a 527 million pound increase in the rate of chemical applications to our food crops. And I think that's probably 
what a lot of people have a problem with. So what is it specifically about GMOs that threatens our health? The concern around the world, which led over 60% of the world's population to label these ingredients and over 20 countries to just restrict them and not allow them at all, was that we didn't know what the long-term impact of the introduction of these ingredients into the food supply were going to be, not only on the health of, say, a child with autism or a pregnant mom or maybe somebody with cancer, but there was also concern, especially in countries like France and New Zealand, over what does this actually do to the soil and the health of the soil when you are genetically engineering these crops to withstand record doses of this chemical application. Um, and it was you know, both a human health and environmental health concern that led a lot of countries, most of our trading partners, to take this precautionary approach and to label these ingredients at the very least, or in some cases restrict them altogether. It's very scary, and especially I know you've got a personal story in terms of the relationship to allergies and kids, and we're seeing it a lot more now. A lot of people think it's because of GMOs. What do you think? So a baby has a very immature immune system, and your digestive tract actually holds 70% of your immune system. So whatever you're putting into a baby's mouth that's going into their digestive system um, is really having a direct impact on that child's immunity. Um, and I think, you know, right now we're starting to see a lot of science is coming out around pesticides and their impact on the developing immune system of a child. They only represent less than 30% of the population, but they're 100% of our future. And right now this generation of children has the title of Generation Rx, and it's because one in three American children has autism, allergies, ADHD, or asthma. The CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, is now saying that cancer is the leading cause of death by disease in kids under the age of 15. The CDC is also saying that uh, the rates of autism have increased 30% in the last two years. And genetics don't change this quickly, but the environmental factors have. Okay, so how do we, concerned citizens, figure out how not to support GMOs and what can we do beyond you know, our purchase power in the grocery store? Um, I would simply you know, say to these companies, just move with us. You know, we've had a relationship with you guys for 35, 40 years. Um, we don't really want to break up with you. We want you to grow up with us. And that just means dumping the artificial ingredients and dumping the junk and giving us food that's free from GMOs, additives, dyes, artificial growth hormones, um, so that we can start to serve our families the same clean products that moms and families are getting overseas. And I think, you know, ultimately, they know they can do it, these companies know that they can do it because they already formulate their products differently overseas. So in these countries that haven't allowed GMOs or artificial growth hormones or no longer allow artificial dyes, our American companies have formulated their products differently overseas. So we're not asking them to reinvent the wheel. We're just saying, you know what, we finally hear we're awake and we want you to move with us. And for them to recognize that it doesn't have to be scary for them anymore, that it is an enormous economic opportunity. And when you look at how fast this sector is growing, it's expected to grow 14% between 2013 and 2018, and yet only 1% of U.S. farmland is under organic management, that means that that entire economic opportunity is being captured by co uh, countries like China and Romania. We're outsourcing that whole opportunity to these countries that are capturing this organic demand. And, you know, I look at that and I think, that's crazy. That should be captured for the American economy, that should be captured for the American farmers, for the American families, for the American companies. So, so let's re really, you know, kind of get our heads around this and start to build out that supply chain here internally in the United States so that we can create a food system that meets the needs of 21st century families. And again, I think um, the power of the consumer in the marketplace is huge today. We have enormous power. Um, never underestimate your ability to connect with a company, um, to, to really write those letters, um, to communicate with store managers, uh, and use social media, use social media to share information and to really get the word out because these companies are listening. Absolutely. I have chill bumps right now because you're empowering us to have that dialogue and I know that is what creates change. So thank you so, so much for being with us today and I look forward to seeing you in person next time. Number one, 
Buy local and organic to avoid GMO foods. Number two, support labeling GMO foods at the polls. And number three, use natural weed killers instead of that harmful herbicide. For example, you can use white distilled vinegar. Remember, consumer choice is driving change, and especially with issues like this. Just vote with your dollars and vote at the polls. When you go to support a company that doesn't use GMOs, you're actually making a vote for the right thing. You can go to our website and check out our list of favorite companies that don't use GMOs. And while you're there, subscribe to Gen B TV so you can make sure to never miss an episode and be entitled to extra special treats. So thanks for caring and thanks for sharing. And we'll see you next week. Hola, hola. Sí, acá probando desde Lompo, California. Jim Bolden, these tomatoes smell fishy. Get it? <laughs> what I don't get is why they're over your eyes. <laughs> oh. <laughs>